for the next two or three videos we're going to look at this idea of speciation and uh, how fossils have helped us to gain an understanding of how living things, how different species have uh, come into being and have changed and have died out over time. And the key bits of evidence that we get is from fossils and fossils are basically the remains of organisms from many many years ago and the majority of the time they're found in rocks and they are formed by various ways. Now the first way is if you've got something like bones which we have here, we've got the bones of um, part of a foot, we've got the bones of a whole organism here, um, the hard parts which are things like teeth and bones they don't decay very easily at all and if um, they are kept under certain conditions where the decay process doesn't happen very quickly or doesn't happen very well and you've got some harder parts of the body these can actually turn into fossils over time so we've got bones over here of an animal and bones of a part of a foot. Um, another clue we have in the, in the form of fossils is when we have traces or clues of uh, living things and that is things like footprints or sometimes we have evidence of burrows of uh, the early touch of living things of how they might have burrowed around and left traces of their, their existence. Um, another way is if we have the absence of conditions absence of the right conditions and by that we mean conditions needed to decay. So one example could be, say we've got uh, an ancient fish that lived millions of years ago, at some point it dies and it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. If it doesn't get eaten by a predator and it sinks to the bottom, it, there is a good chance in some cases, in some cases, that it can very quickly get covered with silt or mud and what would happen then, then is that no oxygen can get in, maybe no microbes and because of that the decay process is either stopped or slowed enough for the actual uh, remains of the living thing to turn into a fossil so this one could turn into a fossil that looks something like that where some of it has managed to decay or rot away but uh, a lot of it hasn't due to the fact that there was not the right conditions. So these are various ways in which we can uh, work out how things have changed over time but if we're looking at these ideas here we're looking at um, parts that are resistant to decay, the harder parts and therefore slightly easier, slightly more easily made into fossils but very early living things, there were things that were soft bodied so things like slug like creatures, I'm not sure exactly um, this is just one made up but it's basically a soft bodied creature and because it's soft body bodied it's more likely to um, decay very quickly and very easily. There's no hard parts to hang around for any sort of length of time. So it's very hard to work out what happened very early on because lots of the living things were soft bodied and decayed away. And the other thing is for those that did manage to get fossilized they have been um, or they have disappeared because of geological activity. And that's stuff like erosion or even volcanic activity which can destroy fossils. So these are the key points about the fossils, how they're made and how they possibly can um, give us an idea of the structure of living things but they can also show us a variety of other things. They can show us how new species are formed. So one of the most famous examples is that of the horse. We have quite a good record of the fossils of the horse and um, that shows how that's changed from something that was the size of a, of a dog all the way up to what it is now. There is also, this point I've missed out, shows how new organisms arise so you can trace the, the beginning of the existence of new organisms and when about in time they were start, they were created, not created but were formed and you can also see how some species might have, have become extinct. So the fossils give us clues for all these sorts of things but there is one very important point to note. There is a lot of uncertainty um, about certain types of living things and how they may have evolved over time or changed over time because of the lack of enough valid and reliable evidence. Scientists can't be certain about how life on earth began. They can't trace back all the way simply because there's not enough 
of uh, what we call valid and reliable evidence. So there's a lot of debate that still goes on about how that how life may have begun on planet Earth. But overall, for this video, what you need to know is what fossils are, how they can give us clues to changes in living things, what those changes might be, but also there is a level of uncertainty um, in using them to work out how life started.